Oh, no, don't be. I was just, you know, worried about you. That's all. I'm good. I'm fine. It's my stomach. Yeah, everybody left. They all took off, except for Simone. You may know Rory Scovel from one of his most recent roles starring opposite Rose Byrne in Apple TV's Physical. No stranger to strong lead female, Scovel's worked alongside Margot Robbie in Babylon and Amy Schumer in I Feel Pretty. He has also made quite a name for himself on his own as a stand-up comedian. His latest special on Max, Rory Scovel, religion, sex, and a few things in between, a prime example of his willingness to tackle all topics and improvise without fear. Both traits, he says, are a part of all of his artistic expressions, which on a recent visit, we found includes both screens and canvas. I saw a bumper sticker on a woman's car. It said, first, God created man. Then, he had a better idea. <laughs> oh, did he? Did he? Did he? For Rory Scovel, comedy is more than just his profession. It's also his addiction. It's a legal drug. It's a legal high. <laughs> There's something that draws you to it. How deep into climate change are you guys willing to go before you murder suicide your family? And no better place to fuel his addiction, Mr. Rory Scovel, than a comedy club. Thank you. There is something about going up into a room like this, filled with strangers, and saying something that is religious or political or sexual and somehow a room full of strangers laughing and connecting with that. The Pope's closed, that's not a red flag. <laughs> that's not a red flag for anybody. That hat. Hey, y'all hold up, I forgot to put my hat on. <laughs> All right, do I look like God's best friend or not? On stage, Scoville feeding off the audience's energy to become a master of the riff whether recording a week-long stint at a club in 2018 with no prepared material. <laughs> what if literally I find nothing else the rest of this show? <laughs> I, I literally talk about the one thing that everyone is like, yeah, we've, we've talked about the traffic. <laughs> or losing his way in his most recent comedy special and pulling out his right. notes. Um, let, me just, let me just figure out where I was in the set. Planned? Not planned? Like Not planned. No. Oh my God. I mean, I always have my notes in my back pocket. <laughs> and then I just crouch down. And I could feel the energy. I could feel the laugh. And my brain was like, well, why can't this be the show? What if this is how I did my special? <laughs> but to me, the fun of it is, can you keep the beach ball in the air knowing that you just made this choice and you have to, like, kind of live with it. Have you ever seen somebody with a highlighted uh, Bible and you're like, uh, hello, why are you highlighting it? The whole book is good. Scoville first began searching for laughs as a kid, one of seven from a large extended family. My grandparents were funny. All of my aunts and uncles were funny. My dad was funny. Were you the class clown? Were yeah. you? I would literally do anything to get a laugh. I would go out on any limb <laughs> and embarrass myself in any way possible to get not just the attention, but it did make me feel cool and like popular if I got people laughing. Like, like, I, like it created some sort of value. His early influences came from movies. <laughs> including Michael J. Fox, who Scoville credits for igniting his acting bug. I would pretend like I was in a scene from Back to the Future because I wanted to be him. So in the world of like comedy and acting, he's yeah. sort of like that first one I can really remember. But then, uh, you know, after that, I remember a night where my dad made me watch uh, the Marx Brothers uh, Horse Feathers movie. Now I want you to sign this agreement. Hey, there's nothing on this paper. That's all right, we'll fill in something later. That was kind of a revelation of like, oh, here's adults like being super silly. And oh, you can be silly your whole life. You can be a class clown forever. Other inspirations included Steve Martin and Jerry Seinfeld. But it was only after hearing a David Cross album that Scoville decided to give stand up a run. He spent more than a decade building his comedy career from late night appearances Thank you. to his first Netflix special in 2017. Thank you, Atlanta. Yeah, my jacket's a problem for a lot of people. <laughs> so many people are already like, Argh! unzip it! <laughs> One year later, it paid dividends on the big screen. Only girls complain about things being a boy's club. <laughs> <laughs>
cast by fellow comedian and friend Amy Schumer to play the romantic lead opposite her in I Feel Pretty. Real quick, because it was killing me. You were like struggling with it. We're not at a comedy club and we're not doing stand-up. So here we are and I get to watch how she takes the reins on leading a movie and doing a comedy, but also how she commands, you know, the process. And while acting and comedy remain Scoville's main artistic pursuits, they're not the only ones. This version excites me because you can't, I don't think you can get any of them wrong, but you can't get this wrong. He's now also bringing his art to the canvas. I wasn't trying to make any money doing it, so I wasn't focused on, well, I need this to be good. I can't survive unless this works. Instead, I just was like, oh, I'm just doing this. And then it, it just became a thing where I really liked doing it. In time, Scoville even started selling his artwork. He says some of his best pieces, like his stand-up material, at their best because of their spontaneity. Can I call a quick timeout? Just quick uh, um, timeout. So if anyone's reviewing the show, grow up. <laughs> How did you turn that into a job? That's absurd to me. Unless you think this part's funny, then put it in the review. When you're on stage, right away, they laugh, they don't. You know if something's sort of working. Yeah. How is that different for you as an artist painting versus an artist on the stage? I want you to know that is the best question. I love that because it is significant. To like a painting, you have to get to a place where you have made something and it has to be void of validation. And this, I don't necessarily need the validation, but I do need people to enjoy it and laugh for it to be this dance that we're There's doing together. Take, there right. is a give and take. One time my daughter asked me what happens when you die, and I was like, I don't know, and neither does anyone else, and anyone who tells you they know is lying to you. My wife was like, hey, why don't we pull it back a little bit? Do you think you are benefiting from having an artistic expression that isn't reliant on yes. somebody else in your other artistic expression yes, now? Yes, a million percent for both stand-up and for acting. Yeah. And instead of bearing the weight of, yeah, but is it good? And will people like it? Who cares if it's good and who cares if they like it? Say that vulnerable thing and then live with it and go from there. Good night. Thank you. And it really is amazing to see how all of those arts intertwine. Follow him on social media. He's, I think he's performing in Atlanta in May. Like, he's just really brilliant. I loved every minute I spent. Oh, it was well, really but, great. But stand up with no prepared material. Unreal. That's the, the, the 2018 show, and I love that yeah. he's inspired by David Cross. Yeah, so and we'll cool. be right back.